Welcome to this video on how to knit a vintage nurse's cap to fit my painted cricket animals. It works best with animals like this panda or koala that have ears on the sides of their head so that the hat will fit on top of the head and between the ears. This pattern uses mostly garter stitch with just a few rows of stockinette at the fold. You'll also need to do some basic increases and decreases. Overall, this is a very quick and fairly simple project. For this pattern, you'll need yarn that's the same weight as the yarn you used for your animal. I'm using 100% uh, cotton yarn. You'll also need straight knitting needles that are at least two sizes larger than the ones that you use to knit your animal. In most cases, I find that I can use the size of the needles that are recommended for the weight of the yarn that I'm using. I use smaller needles for the animals so that the stuffing doesn't show through the stitches, but the clothes need looser stitches so that they stretch. And two small buttons to fasten the back of the cap. You'll also need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and some way to keep track of which row you're on. Just a few more things before I get to the pattern. Don't let my knitting style throw you off. Just knit and purl in the way that's most comfortable for you. Please like and share my videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click show more in the description area for links to more videos and information. Share photos of your completed project on my Facebook page. You can find a link for that in the description area too. And finally, if you'd like a written pattern, I've given links to the shops where I sell them in the description area as well. Okay, let's get started. Here's an example of the finished project. We start at the top of the front flap that folds up, and then we continue working to the back. Start by casting on 13 stitches. Knit across on row 1. Knit across again on row 2. Then continue knitting across rows 3 through 9, and I'll meet you back here when you're ready to start row 10. On row 10, knit the first stitch and then increase once. I like to increase by knitting into the row below the stitch on the needle. Continue knitting across till you get to the last stitch. At that point, increase once again, and then knit the last stitch. When you're finished with row 10, you'll have 15 stitches. On row 11, we're going to create a fold for the front flap, so purl across on this row. The flap folds up on this row, so the inside of the fold is on the other side of this row. We're going to increase again on row 12, so knit one, then increase one, and then knit to the last stitch. Then increase again and knit that last stitch. When you're finished with this row, you'll have 17 stitches.
For rows 13 through 17, continue garter stitch and just knit across again every row without increasing. So go ahead and work rows 13 through 17, and I'll meet you back here when you're ready to work row 18. We're going to increase again on row 18. So knit one, increase one, and then knit to the last stitch. Then increase again and knit the last stitch. When you're finished with this row, you'll have 19 stitches. On row 19, we begin creating the buttonholes. Knit across till three stitches remain. Then knit two together, yarn over, and then knit the last stitch. On row 20, bind off the first six stitches. After binding off 6 stitches, you should have 1 stitch on your right needle and 12 on the left needle. Then knit to the last 3 stitches. And make another buttonhole. Do this by knitting 2 together, then do a yarn over, and then knit the final stitch. And at this point, you should have 13 stitches. On row 21, bind off the first six stitches again. After the bind offs, you should have one stitch on your right needle and six on the left needle. Then knit the remaining stitches. When you're done, you should have seven stitches. On rows 22 through 37, just continue garter stitch by knitting across on every row. So go ahead and do that now, and then I'll meet you back here on row 38. On row 38, bind off all the stitches knitwise. Then cut the yarn, leaving enough of a tail to attach the two buttons, and pull it through the final loop. Using that tail, sew a small button on each end of the back center panel, and be sure to sew these buttons on the side of the cap where you see the fold indentation or the part with the knit stitches showing. To assemble the cap, 
fold the back center panel up so that each button fastens to its corresponding buttonhole, so the hole goes over the button on the same side. Then fold the front panel up with indentation or knit stitches on the inside of the fold. You can leave the cap just like this with a plain white front panel, or if you like, you can embroider a red cross on the front panel. You could also embroider a black line a couple rows down from the top of the panel. If you want to embroider something, don't forget that the front panel folds up so that the front of the panel is actually on the side where the buttons don't show. And that's it. This cap will balance on the top of the animal's head, but if you'd like it to be attached more permanently, you could sew a couple stitches to tack it down. You could also attach a string on each side to tie the cap more securely to the head. Thanks for watching this video. Please like it and subscribe to my channel so you can get notified when I release new videos. And don't forget to share a photo of your completed project on my Facebook page. See you next time!